Okay, all set? Yes, we're all good. Fantastic, thank you. Good evening, I'm calling this public meeting to order in accordance with the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, MGLC uh, 131 section 40 in the Boston Wetlands Ordinance, Boston City Code Ordinances Chapter 7-1.4. Boston Conservation Commission will hold a virtual public hearing this evening on February 7th, 2024 to review the following projects to determine what conditions, if any, the commission will impose in order to protect the interests of the public and private water supply, groundwater, prevention of pollution, flood control, prevention of storm damage, protection of fisheries and land-containing shellfish, and protection of wildlife habitat. Uh, this evening's hearing will be followed by our regular meeting. In accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, we are conducting this meeting online. To ensure public access to the deliberations of the Conservation Commission, the public may access this call through telephone and video conferencing. Additionally, the meeting is being recorded. If you do not wish to be recorded, please turn off your video. Members of the public may have an opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment on applications and discussions. To do so, please raise your hand or type in the chat in the application via the Zoom meeting platform. If you're calling in and cannot use the platform, um, sorry, got something in my eye, cannot use the platform, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine and star six to unmute yourself. Send your questions to staff via email at ccboston.gov or via Twitter by tagging the Twitter handle at Boston Enviro and using the hashtag ConCom hearing. Uh, for the record, I am Michael Parker, Chair of the Commission. Uh, could staff please identify themselves? Elena Itamary with the Environment Department. Dee Dee Hernandez with the Environment Department. Okay, thank you. Uh, call the role of commissioners present this evening. Commissioner Sullivan? John Sullivan. Commissioner Wilson? Nope. Is he not with us tonight? I don't see his picture. He will not be coming tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Conan? Conan Thiruvangadam. Thank you. Commissioner Herbst? Ann Herbst? Great, myself. Okay, first item on the agenda is notice of intent for DEP file number 006 um, 1973 and Boston file number 2023 063 from Fort Point Associates on behalf of the Esplanade Association for the proposed construction of a new welcoming destination located at 280 Charles Street in the West End of Boston. Uh, resource areas are 25 foot riverfront. Uh, and waterfront areas and 100 foot buffer to bank. This is continued from the November 15th, 2023 hearing. Who's here on behalf of the um, applicant? Thank you, Chair Parker. My name is Katie Moniz and I'm with Fort Point Associates. We're here tonight on behalf of our client, the Esplanade Association and memberships of uh, the Esplanade Association and their consultants are with me tonight. Great, thank you, Katie. So, um, I think uh, where we left this was we are still in the um, discussions with DCR regarding uh, orders of conditions, both generally and um, and then specifically applied to this project. Uh, you provided some uh, red lines. You and I think uh, Council for EEA um, have provided us some red line comments. I just saw them probably, I don't know, 15 minutes ago. So I've gone through and I have uh, responded to almost all of your comments. Um, and so I think the best um, course of action uh, is to have these sent back to you so you can um, digest them uh, and continue that discussion as we're still continuing the discussion with DCR um, generally. Um, one thing that I thought we should discuss this night tonight was condition 60 regarding the, the BWSC um, storm drains or BWSC owned infrastructure. So um, I've sent, um, Commissioner Sullivan has looked at or he's looking at um, condition 60. Uh, and so to start it off, could you um, give us some flavor as to why you've made that change? Sure, and, and just for context here, I think, uh, important to clarify, and we hope these changes are acceptable, that we do have a slightly unique situation here, which is the applicant is responsible for a portion of the Esplanade, but not for the Esplanade itself as a larger property. Uh, so we've uh, proposed those changes in which to delineate clearly uh, what the applicant can control. Um, and in particular for uh, item number 60, 
differentiating where our contributions may go into infrastructure owned by DCR versus Boston Water and Sewer. No okay, objection. Can I just, and I, I know I asked you to talk about 60, but since you uh, brought up um, the other issue of the um, project site itself, uh, to give you a preview of what I did, I actually, uh, first off, um, uh, did not want to introduce a new plan that had not been introduced at the hearing uh, as an attachment to the order of conditions. Um, otherwise, we would have to reopen a uh, not reopen, it is open, but uh, that that that's something that wasn't considered in the record. Uh, so um, we would not want to put that in there at this point. Um, as far as the project site, um, I think it's clear in this order condition, in any order conditions um, that we um, issue, that the project site is the property, uh, as it says in the first um condition and the property is what is depicted uh, on the site plans that are given to us during the hearing, what we consider during the hearing, and also the narrative in your NOI. Um, so um, from my perspective, and we can talk about this further, you can go back and forth, I think, with staff uh, in the future, but from my perspective to change property to something more specific like project site um, one, it's not necessary, and two, it's a bit confusing. Three, um, as you can imagine, um, these are standard conditions. A lot of these are standard, standard conditions, and um, to change standard conditions uh, to, you know, um, not so much accommodate requests, but change standard conditions um, is problematic for us, number one, but number two, um, to change them for what I would consider not necessary, to do just opens the door for us to have more discussions about changing our standard conditions, which I'll quote um, Commissioner Sullivan, uh, his famous words, we're very loath to do that. So I just wanna give you that preview uh, when you get um, my comments back to you. So let's go back to um, condition 60. Could I just ask one brief question because you did sure. mention, uh, obviously there has been a lot of negotiation here uh, between uh, staff working with us and DCR working with us. You noted uh, that you were not comfortable with the plan. I believe we moved past that in the last version of this. And Elena, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that uh, we're all looking at the same version and don't want to introduce any new or conflicting information. But, no, I, I had seen the newest. That came oh, in, fantastic. Yes, yeah, so we pulled like back from 50. a plan entirely, yes. Yeah, 453 or something like that. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, so specifically, you asked me a question related to proposed amendment to 60. Uh, Correct. 60, as it reads here, uh, is uh, specific to uh, getting the approval of Boston Water and Sewer Commission, which we certainly do not object to. Um, I think the clarification fundamentally uh, was more about um, delineating between which is B uh, Boston Water and Sewer owned infrastructure uh, which is water and sewer in this case. Um, and then our stormwater system actually has a direct outfall uh, to the river and does not connect to Boston water and sewer infrastructure. So again, no objection and certainly will be going before Boston water and sewer. Um, but from a clarity perspective, uh, DCR's infrastructure at the Esplanade in this location uh, fundamentally goes to an outfall. Interesting. So Commissioner Sullivan, have you seen the language I uh, know, and I was just looking at the emails okay. that come through. That's the beauty of having a good firewall. You guys can we talk can um, Elena um, Read copy it. it and share it uh, for you on the on screen? The, sure, sure. Sorry, I realize that you can't see what I'm doing as I'm doing it, so I'm pulling that language up right now. Yep. I can see what you're doing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We've reached that point in Zoom world. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to copy and paste it in the chat. I think that might be. Oh, good idea. Yep. Uh, oh, perfect. Thank you. I think Conan has put it up in the chat. He's quick. Thank you so much. 
So again, as note, the modification, which I obviously is hard to see in the copied in, uh, just indicates that it uh, relates to Boston Water and Sewer owned infrastructure where we're making those connections. Right, and and, and Chairman, did what did you want to change on that language? Well, yeah, so this condition, it's a standard condition that we put in there and usually it reads, prior to the commencement of work, the applicant must submit to commission staff notice of the plans for this project. And so do you ever review, I guess the question is, do you ever review plans for non-BWSC owned infrastructure? So in other words, if there's DCR infrastructure and we are asking um, them to go in front of you, what is your review? Would you review all the infrastructure, whether it's state-owned or city-owned or just BWSC? We, we review all of it. In fact, um, whenever the EDIC, Massport, anybody does stormwater improvements, we don't own those improvements. We don't regulate them uh, with their own permit, but we review and comment on them. And we don't release our plans until we know it works to the specifications we have. Now, whether or not we have authority to do that's a question, but you don't get your water and sewer connections until you make us happy. So. Um, you can call that what you will. So in this case, we would look at the all the issues with the infiltration. It does look like it looks okay. There's a quick little a brush on it. But we would comment on those. And they would satisfactorily come back and say, no, it's DCR. They own it. We would question whether there's a permit. We, you know, we're not the God keepers from permits, but we question everybody. Um, so in this case, if you had the normal language, it would be subject to us approving it. And our comments would say we no problem with the water, no problem with the sewer, and we don't own the drainage, but we reviewed it. And okay. that's that's how that's how we normally do any of these. And no one cares. I mean, we won't stop things if they say if we said, Well, we really you'd like to have it 10 feet over. We wouldn't do that. We just want it functionally working. You know, again, it's our city at the end of the day. We all have permits and we just want to make sure the infiltration is working, phosphorus removal is working, and, and off we go. Okay, so could I um, hone in on that a little bit? So a project comes before you with two sets of infrastructure, one city owned, uh, one BWSC owned, and one state owned. Um, is it fair to say that you would approve BWSC owned infrastructure and comment on state infrastructure. Right, so in, the in this case, I think what the difference is, we require you to hold the first inch of water and put it in the ground. And what that in actuality does is it gives us the 65% removal, probably a little more. And it also puts a lot more water back in the groundwater. What they do with the state is they just want to remove their 65%. So a lot of times their infrastructure will be smaller than if it connected to us. That's a generalized statement. So mm -hmm. what they're saying is we're going to meet the TMDL, which we say congratulations. If this was connecting to a Boston water and sewer pipe, we would not allow this. We would make them give a volumetric holding of one inch of water times the impervious area. But this would be approved because it's meeting the 65%, which is a TMDL. And we might comment on that. And then if you want to hook up to us, you're going to follow our ranks. So okay. but I think the, the original language takes care of that anyway. It feels that way to me. Um, I'm going to go down the line real quick here. Commissioner Conan, uh, what do you feel about this? It feels like um, we should revert back to the original language. Commissioner Herbst. Oh, Commissioner Conan, are you? Um... Oh, okay. Thank you. Hand gesture. Um, Commissioner Herbst. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think we should, should stick with our language. I also, I mean, to me, part of the point is also that 
functionally the Boston Water and Sewer Commission review is is our review of compliance with the DEP stormwater rate. Right? So, um, you know, we want that review to happen. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Katie, I think you have the answer on um, sixty. Uh, and, Trevor, would you mind if I just uh, made a quick comment? Sure, go right ahead. I do want to follow up that the stormwater management system, again, is being designed by the applicant and not by the state. And so it is our intention to follow the intent uh, of Boston Water and Sewers policy. Um, while we may not be fundamentally required to, it's always been an objective of the project. And, and our engineer from Niche here has always worked uh, with the assumption that Boston Water and Sewer will comment on the system. So the policy, you know, we believe certainly is something that we would follow. And I do think we're talking semantics, you know, as it relates to the order between the state's preference and the city's preference. Uh, and certainly happy as the applicant to be completely compliant with Boston Water and Sewer. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. And again, um, and I don't mean this is a bard, but if something is a matter of semantics, we definitely want to stick with our semantics. Understood. Yeah. Okay. And, and my only comment then to your engineer would be they would get the impervious area times one inch of rainfall, and there'd be a volume there, X number of cubic feet. And then just show us that the subsurface infiltration system holds that many cubic feet. It's, you know, it's third grade math. <clears throat> not trying to belittle engineers here, but it's it's not a killer. I, I won't take it personal as an engineer, but we did bring our, our civil engineer. And so Bill did just turn his camera on. Uh, Bill, I think you might want to reply. <laughs> yes. Uh, hi, John. Uh, you know, Bill from Niche. And just to let you know, and I guess um, all of the commission members know, is that we did file this with Boston Water and Sewer back in October. We did get comments back, um, you know, from Boston Water and Sewer. We have not resubmitted, you know, at this time yet. But we are showing compliance with that one inch of runoff times all of the impervious area on the site. This is why we have our um, infiltration systems that are interconnected here. We've got a basin over to the uh, right side of the, uh, you know, building. And for impervious areas, we are including, you know, the roof, the, the walkways and, and all that. So it, it does all channel into these systems to meet the TSS standard, to meet the phosphorus standard, and to meet Boston Water and Sewer and DEP standards. Right, Bill, you know that on the plan, we simply need that on the on the plan we sign, the calculation showing the one inch holding. And, and, and it is noted on the uh, you know, plan, it was noted on the first submission that we made right. back in October, you know, John, so right. and it, it'll always remain there, you know, yep. um, no. Once it's signed off by Boston Water and Sewer, sewer and uh, and yourself. Yep. So I'll just tell you, I'm looking forward to taking a look at this one, Bill. You know, I've just we should be all set. I'm just saying, with the piece we have up here in front of us right now, we don't accept this type of calc. We just want to see the volumetric because we know it meets all the requirements. And and, and just to um, and and in you know, John. No, this image that you're seeing right here, it's not showing that calculation that you yeah. um, that that is requested, but it is on the utility site plan that was submitted to Boston Water and Sewer and commented on, and the um, subsequent um, you know, submissions will keep that um, calculation on there. Yep. Great. Okay. Um, so, Katie, it sounds like. Um, you're going to be getting some comments back from us regarding uh, this proposed order conditions. Uh, I know DCR is going to have uh, final say or say over this. Um, I don't think it can make any decisions for them. Um, and I know you haven't seen these comments because I finished them up maybe three minutes before we got on. So um, I don't think that there's any option other than to continue uh, and hopefully um, you're able to work with staff and uh, DCR and get these finalized for the next hearing. That being said, what is the timeline for this project? Uh, well, as you, uh, you know, obviously we have been continued a number of times and yep. a lot of this is 
been procedural between getting an order of conditions that everyone's comfortable with. Uh, we are working diligently here towards a filing with waterways uh, on the anticipation that they would love to be constructing this project in fall of this year. Um, so anything the commission can do and the staff can do to support our negotiations uh, through the process here with DCR so that we're at a comfortable level between everyone. I had really hoped we were today, and it seems like maybe we're still a couple of steps apart here, but I think we've made great progress. Uh, I would hope that what you're seeing in front of you today has a limited number of uh, further considerations. Fantastic. Um, so um, quick question about Daniel, I mean, the um, waterway shop. Um, mm -hmm shop um are they waiting for you to have uh an order of conditions from us before they consider your licensing well they always appreciate it if we do they're they're not holding us up right now at all and are Good. working out with us well um yeah. but as you know for the sequence of permits here obviously we want to make sure that anything we put in front of them uh certainly is blessed by the conservation commission okay great thank you okay uh elena do we have any um Anybody from the public who wanted to um, comment? I'm not seeing any hands up and we also didn't receive any emails. Okay, thank you. So with that, I would entertain a motion to continue the hearing. So moved. Do you have a second? Commissioner Conan, it's up to you because Commissioner Sullivan has done all his talking for the evening. Correct. Okay. Do you have an audio problem? You okay? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Well, listen, to, just to bail them out, and this won't happen again ever, I second it. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Sullivan? Aye. Commissioner Conan? Sorry. Yep. Thumbs up. Uh, let the record reflect that Commissioner Conan voted aye. Uh, Commissioner Herbst? Aye. And I vote aye, so that carries for nothing. Okay, sorry, I didn't realize you're having audio problems. Um, okay, next item on the agenda has been continued because I have recused myself from this matter. Um, we only have four commissioners tonight. Uh, with my recusal, that would uh, bring us down to three, which is not a quorum. So this is going to have to be continued. Uh, do we have a uh, motion to continue this hearing? I'm, I'm sorry, I need to call it out. Um, so, so sorry. Let, let me call it out. Okay. I, I'd entertain a motion to continue notice of intent for DEP file number 0061957 in Boston file number 2023-047. So moved and I, I second sure. it on behalf of uh, Commissioner Sullivan. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Sullivan? Aye. Commissioner Conan? Let the record reflect we got an aye from Commissioner Conan. Um, Commissioner Herbst? Aye. And myself, uh, an aye. That passes for nothing. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is a request for an extension for DEP file number 006172 from Fort Point Associates on behalf of Bayside Club Hotel LLC for the proposed expansion to the existing hotel located at 240 Mount Vernon Street in Dorchester, the resource areas, land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, who's here on behalf of the applicant, if anyone? Hi, my name's Katie Moore. Um, I'm an environmental planner with Fort Point Associates, and I'm joined by Tom Devane, a representative of the applicant. Okay, great. Um, did you have any uh, presentation or remarks? Or there we are. Okay. We do, yeah. It, it, and first, we want to thank the chair and commission for their time tonight. Um, so we are here to request an extension of time to the order of conditions at the Double Tree Hotel uh, expansion project at 240 Mount Vernon Street in Dorchester. And just to provide a bit of an overview, um, I'm not sure if all of the commissioners were involved with the initial uh, review of this project, but the project involves the construction of an addition to the existing hotel, along with improvements and associated parking, landscaped areas, utilities, uh, and stormwater management systems. Uh, next slide, please. So to orient you to where the project site is, uh, this shows the location near the intersection of Mount Vernon Street and Morsi Boulevard. 
it's near the entrance of the former Bayside Expo site uh, or the potential Dorchester Bay City site, if folks are familiar with that. Um, the aerial reflects the condition that was submitted in the initial NOI. Um, in, in general, construction was delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and honestly, the impact of the pandemic on the hotel industry resulted in even the temporary closure of the hotel for a little bit there. So there were some delays associated with that. Uh, next slide. Uh, thank you. Uh, so in this more recent aerial image, it shows some of the work that's actually been completed to date. And you can see the uh, work includes in sort of the light outlined areas, those are the um, the additions, footings, and some of the foundation. Uh, and then other work it includes the the project's been um, involved in Dorchester Bay City's project review process and how that interacts with this particular site. So over time, there certainly progress has been being made. <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. Uh, and here we, we have the, the site plan. The existing hotel is within the blue box and the proposed addition and improvements are within the orange box. And that is the area where work has been um, progressing so far. And it, uh, in general, the addition will be approximately just under 7,100 gross square feet. It will net an additional 104 guest rooms and add about 8,400 square feet of meeting space. In addition, there would be a um, publicly accessible restaurant and lounge on the ground floor towards the uh, Mount Vernon Street side. And there'd be an ex uh, expanded landscaped area with um, green space. And I think the open space is something like 31,000 square feet. Uh, so it, uh, just high level of the uh, project there. And with that, Tom and I are happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, great. Thank you, Katie. So just to be clear, um, you're not proposing any additional work. Um, this is merely an extension um, for the order for the uh, work already approved. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, no change conditions. No, not from what they, I mean, work has obviously progressed over since we, we saw you um, originally with the NOI, but it, they're, the, the site conditions are still the same. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Elena, um, do you have anything on this? Oh, yeah, uh, just a few notes. So uh, just noting that, yeah, this is the second request for an extension and staff conducted a site visit on the 1st of February. Um, we also noted uh, that there wasn't a DEP file number on site. However, we've received a photo of the sign and we'll also receive confirmation when the sign is installed on site. So we'll be able to log that in the file for the project as well. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Commissioner Sullivan, what do you have? Uh, were you required to get an NPDES permit? Uh, was it an acre or more? And has that expired? Um, I don't recall that one off the top of my head, but all of the permits that we were originally issued have been, they're still all valid. I do believe we do have an M NPDES um, permit. Actually, Tom, can you speak to that one? I think you were the one who filed that. Well, I saw him on here. Tom, are you muted, maybe? Sorry, Katie. I uh, I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look at my records. Okay. Yeah, and so my only comment would be, would you look at the records? And if you haven't, you know, renewed that, or I'm not sure when that would have run out, um, just make sure you get it because we are responsible for chasing you down to make sure that the federal permit works I mean, it's their permit, but they, they dumped it on us to chase you down. Yes, so. and I, if I recall correctly, um, <clears throat> I believe the Massachusetts general permit for that expired a year or two ago, and we did um, uh, submit a, 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 for an extension of that permit. So if it's the one I'm thinking of, it, it is still valid. Yeah, so this would be a construction permit. It, it's yeah. um, a construction, but it has to be, I believe it's an acre or more. So are you an acre or more? Well, perhaps my first question that you're digging up. Uh, the project site as a whole, or the uh, the entire site is, so I believe that we would be. Yeah, 
So if you could just check on that tomorrow. Yep. Uh, and, and if there's any questions, call my office and we'll, we'll we'll chase it down with you. But that was my only comment to make sure we're covering that also. Mr. Sullivan, um, am I to understand that EPA has delegated um, the authority to oversee uh, NIPTI's construction permits to BWSC? Yeah, what they've done, anything in Boston, we're responsible to make sure that people file for it before we give them an okay. And we're yeah. responsible to go out and check to make sure that all the um, provisions required under that permit are being um, upheld. It's, it's, oh. it, we fought, we didn't want it. This isn't something we said, please give us some more work. Uh, right. As part of our consent decree, we agreed to do it. Oh, I was hoping that you had an MOU where you were getting compensated, but it sounds like um, this is an enforcement matter with the CD. Okay, never yeah. mind. Yeah, well, we're getting compensated. I'm not in jail, so that's a plus. Yeah, so the, yeah. You know that's... how that works. Yeah. Okay, good for us. Um, Commissioner Conan, did you want to, um, if you have any comments in the chat? Are you able to hear me, Chair Parker? Yes, here we go. Great. All right. So, sorry about the trouble earlier. I did some troubleshooting and that seems to have worked. Um, now, my only question was, is this a second extension? Or Yes, like this is a, a request for a second extension. Yeah, as I mentioned, it, unfortunately, with the timing of the pandemic, that did not do any favors to the hotel industry. And so, yes, this is a second a request with the idea that this would ideally be the last time we are asking for an extension. Mm -hmm. well, but you're not sure, right? I guess you can't be. I mean, I, I can't foresee if there's some issues in, to the uh, hotel industry in the future, but I mean, uh, the intention is certainly to to move forward at this point. Great. Thank you. Let's all your program. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Herbst? No questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, Elena, did we get any raised hands from the public? I'm not seeing any raised hands and nothing in our inbox either. Okay, so with that, I would entertain a motion to extend this order of conditions for an additional three years. So moved. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Sullivan? Aye. Commissioner Conn? Aye. Commissioner Herbst? Aye. And I vote aye, so that carries for nothing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay, uh, there's been a number of continuances continued um, are uh, notice of intent for DEP file number 0061704 in Boston file number 2020-007, DEP file number 0061772 in Boston file number 2021-010, DEP file number 0061961 in Boston file number 2023-051. And that's it. Um, the commission will now begin its regular meeting. First item um, on the agenda for the regular meeting is request for a certificate of compliance for DEP phone number 0061547 for the improvements to Henderson Boathouse located at 1345 Soldiers Field Road in Brighton. Um, resource area is a riverfront area and 100 foot buffer to Inland Bank. Elena, what do you what do you have on this? Yeah, so we conducted a site visit on the 1st of February. Uh, everything seemed to be the way it should be. Uh, nothing was left out. Uh, construction was complete. And we included some photos in the drive folder. Apologies for the late upload on those, but um, they're in the drive folder for the commission to review if they would like. Um, and other than that, everything seems good to go. So staff would recommend uh, issuing a COC for this work. Okay. Um, any questions from any commissioners? Nope. Okay, so with that, I would uh, entertain a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for DEP file number 0061547. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Sullivan? Aye. Commissioner Conan? Aye. Commissioner Herbst? Aye. And I vote aye. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda, administrative updates. Yes, so uh, an exciting update that is coming a bit uh, delayed, we apologize for this, but uh, we are asking the commission to vote to actually accept the parcel transfer uh, for the Matt Hunt parcels, which we had discussed uh, quite a few months ago at this point. So just as a reminder, they're located on Alabama Street and Colorado Street in Mattapan. 
We've included the parcel ID numbers and uh, they, the transfer is from the Mayor's Office of Housing to the care, custody, and control of the Boston Conservation Commission for conservation purposes. Uh, we also have a few slides just indicating again on the map where, uh, where these parcels are. Okay. I had a I had a question on on that uh, yeah. Elena. So I know they were cleaning up the area, so we got rid of trash, litter, debris, etc. Mm -hmm. If in two years that gets all kinds of debris, etc., put on it illegally, whose responsibility to go in there and clean it up? On the on these new parcels that the the commission is acquiring. Yeah. Uh, so I believe that that would be between the commission and um, potentially because of the urban wild, it, it could also be the urban wilds team. So that would be something that we'd be coordinating. That's my understanding. Right. But, you know, given that unless you two want to go out there with a bunch of black bags and pick up the stuff with gloves and all, I just wonder physically you got to pick stuff up and physically you got to dump it somewhere. Who does that? That might be a better question for the urban wild team and i can check in on how they usually manage that type of issue i know that sometimes there are also partnerships between the city um i i know that for example at i think it's roslindale wetlands they recently had um a, a trash pickup um and so there are also ways of engaging community groups or just members yeah. of the community who live uh close by but i can definitely get more information on sort of um specific uh procedures yeah, i'm just curious how it works that's all oh of course yeah so, so in general, Eleanor. oh, go ahead, go ahead, Tom. Um, yeah, th thank you, sir. Um, it's um, in general, you know, it'd be good to know whenever um, a parcel is acquired, what the maintenance plan is, because it will take some capacity to take care of it. Commissioner Sullivan brought up trash cleanup, but there may be a lot more than that to do, and is it just? Kind of an assumption that the current capacity of the urban wilds team is enough or is it an assumption that there can be some creativity and in including volunteers in the community or should this be a more deliberate plan i'd just be more comfortable seeing a plan when voting on stuff of course understood so um i think that when uh considering that this is part of uh, a larger project that's currently in the works to uh, try to have some improvements in um, in Mattahan Woods. One of the one of the larger elements of that is that we've noted the city has noticed that uh, when areas are cleaned up and when there are more deliberate paths that are created, that also reduces dumping. So one of the sort of hopes for this improvement in this area is that uh, after the cleanup is done and there's signage and there are these paths and and there's more people using the area, that'll um, sort of inherently reduce waste, which is a, a great side effect of this. Um, but I, I completely understand uh, the the question about having a more a more concrete management plan, and I can uh, work on getting that. I can talk to either uh, Kat McCandless for this site in particular, and I can I can check in with Urban Wilds as well on um, what the sort of uh, I guess more yeah more concrete deliberate maintenance plan is for for these areas. Thank you, Commissioner Herbs. Did you have any any comments? Yeah, just a couple. I um, thank you for this. It's exciting. I. And I, I think this, I, I'm sorry that um, Commissioner Long isn't here today because um, it, it would be a good conversation to have with him, uh, I think, uh, about sort of what the needs are and, and what's happening now. I know that I participated in a volunteer cleanup event here some, some time back. And I just had a curiosity question because I see the outline of the urban wilds in black. I'm curious about the properties that are not green or yellow but appear to be in the urban wilds, whether they're under some other ownership or, or what that means. Yeah, there are some properties in there that um, are under private ownership still. Um, and so they're sort of within the boundaries of the urban wild, um, but have not been acquired by the city, which is kind of a, a, an interesting sort of middle ground state to be in. <laughs> huh. uh, yeah. And the three that are outside of the, and, and maybe this is a question more for the urban wilds. I'm just curious about the three properties that are not currently inside the urban wild uh, outline, what what the thinking is about those. Right. And I can, uh, that's a question that I can also check with Kat McCandless on um, since okay. she's point on the project. But um, I, my understanding is that uh, it would 
kind of be brought into the urban wild in a sense. Um, and uh, but I can I can check with her to make sure that that is the the plan. Yeah, I guess it would actually connect across the the paper street there. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I think it would um, if there's a time when our agenda isn't overwhelming, it it would be really interesting to hear more about our holdings and plans for them. But it's it's typical that conservation commissions don't end up having a lot of time to deal with the property ownership side of things. So be be nice to do at some point. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That was my question about the three parcels that are outside there. So I do remember over in Roslindale, um, we did something with MOH and Habitat for Humanity actually rehabbed um, a multifamily, one or two over there. I can't remember the name of the street. It was a pretty exciting project. Um, Commissioner Herbst, um, you'll be glad to know that um, your work, I think I was with you on that cleanup. Um, the environment department actually has a picture of us, actually. Well, <laughs> let me put it this way. They have a picture of me standing and talking to you while you're working, um, which is pretty <laughs> typical. Um, but so your, your efforts are definitely recognized. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Um, we should do that in the spring with the other commissioners. Um, it's good to get out and see what our holdings are. And actually, um, I thought it was very quite a learning experience, actually. What was really surprising to me um, is how um, neighbors uh, like to use these properties uh, either to encroach upon or to dump, which is, like was very surprising to me. Uh, so they do need a lot of care, um, especially when they're vacant like that. So, okay. So, um, Elena, if you want to go back to the original slide, uh, we've been through this drill before. I have to read off all the numbers um, for the vote uh, to make it official. So, okay, good. Um, so with that, I would entertain a motion to accept a uh, parcel transfer for the following parcels located on Alabama Street and Colorado Street in Mattapan. Uh, their parcel identification numbers are 1802622000, parcel number 1802615000, parcel number 1802606000, parcel number 1802828000, Parcel number 1802829000 and parcel number 1802830000 from the mayor's office of housing to the care, custody, and control of the Boston Conservation Commission for conservation purposes. So moved. We have a second. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Sullivan? Aye. Commissioner Conning? Aye. Commissioner Herbst? Aye. Uh, and I vote aye. That carries for nothing. That's great. Um, next two items. Oh, Elena, anything else on administrative updates? No, that was it. Thank you. Great. Well, that was enough. That's great news. Um, okay. Uh, next item, acceptance of orders and conditions uh, because, oh, not surprising. These both involve DCR. Uh, orders of conditions, uh, they'll be continued. Uh, notice of intent for DEP file number 0061958 and Boston file number 2023-048 and also DEP file number 0061928 and Boston file number 2023-018. Um, last item on the agenda are the acceptance of the meeting minutes from the June 7th, 2023 and January 17th, 2024 hearings. Um, I reviewed the... Uh, both sets of minutes uh, have made some changes. Uh, so uh, I think they're good to go. Uh, if there are no other questions, I'd entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes from June 7th, 2023 and January 17th, 2024. So moved. Thank you. Commissioner Sullivan? Aye. Commissioner Conan? Aye. Commissioner Herbst? Aye. Uh, and I vote aye, so that carries for nothing. Um, it's quarter of seven. I almost feel guilty. Like we didn't, we're not earning our pay here. It's not midnight. So, um, oh, Alice just said something. There is an event. Oh. Oh, on Saturday. Oh, fantastic. Good. Thank you, Alice.
Maybe we'll it's going to be warm happens. out Saturday, so you're going to be in good shape. That's a good yeah. news. If they, um, and you, uh, Commissioner Sullivan, didn't you mean we? I said, no, you heard me, you. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, okay. Do, do any of the staff know if the path around the wilds is complete? Is that, is this? It is, Alice says. Thank you. Oh, I'm that's great. to see it. Yeah, the Coniston Road, Coniston Road entrance. Okay, good. Thank you. Maybe we'll see you there. What time does it start? It's three hours, nine to 12. Okay, fantastic. Um, so with that, um, anybody object to adjourning? If we must. Hearing no objections, uh, good night. And uh, thank you. Take care. Good night. Thanks. Bye. Thank you all.